Daily Broadside, day 445. I wonder in sheer numbers, how many people have been saved um, or rescued from the panic button on their key fob to their vehicle? You know, we've had those things since, you know, the mid 90s, maybe earlier. I can't remember. Um, I, mean, I know they had them in, you know, 94, 95, around in there. But let, let's just assume that, you know, it's been, you know, 30 years. Uh, close to it, 25, 30 years of panic buttons on fobs. I bet you the number in America is like less than 12 people who have seen danger afoot, chirp, chirp, and panic button, and something came to their rescue to stop them. You know, it's like a rape whistle. How effective has a rape whistle? Like, if you own a rape whistle company, how effective uh, is your marketing strategy, like as far as success stories and all that? And if they work, great. Uh, you know, I'm all for rape whistles if, if that's actually a, a viable deterrent towards uh, such a reprehensible crime. But it makes me wonder if that's even a thing. And much like the panic button, it would be the same thing. If you're not aware, and most people aren't, Nuno Betancourt is better than Eddie Van Halen. He's Eddie Van Halen 2.0. He's better in every facet of, of everything. He writes better riffs. He's a much better guitar player. The dude can do anything. And if you've ever delved into like the funk riffs, and he was clearly influenced by Eddie. He stole a lot of things from Eddie, but he took it to another level and made it better. Um, and it, what's weird is they both had Gary Sharon as their singer, and no one ever liked the Gary Sharon version of, of Van Halen but they, they like extreme, but Nuno is just otherworldly amazing. Um, uh, so there's that, put that in your pipe and smoke it guitar players. And apparently Cornell West has entered his hat into the ring of the, um, <clears throat> democratic race for president in 2024. And I will say this, although I don't agree with everything Mr. West says, I do find him very intriguing as a, um, as a speaker, um, he's obviously an educator, a very well-read man, uh, speaks very eloquently, is a phenomenal uh, arguer or debater, uh, knows his position and formulates his positions well and defends them well. And I could not even imagine a debate whereby Biden and Cornell West talk. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, you're talking about like Tesla debating the Energizer Bunny, like, and that's a really stupid example, but like just a mental giant and a complete buffoon who can't form a sentence on his own without a teleprompter and then usually can't do it then either. But uh, it, I, I pray that there are some kind of outside the DNC um, unsanctioned um, debates because Cornell West would, would be, I, I'd, I'd love watching people with that kind of um, acumen, uh, mental acumen, uh, debate other people. It's, it's fascinating. Um, so th that's interesting. And you don't really see a lot of educators, uh, put their hat in the ring. Uh, like I said, you know, it, and when was the last time, like teachers and, and, you know, um, professors and stuff like that. And of course, Biden is a professor at the university of Delaware, wherever the crap in Pennsylvania, wherever he said he was a professor where he wasn't honorary professor is not professor. But when was the last time you saw somebody uh, of that ilk, uh, put their hat in the ring. I've, I've said hat in the ring three times and I need to stop it and we need to move on. Um, Brad Arnold, the lead singer of Three Doors Down. Great voice. And it's actually, it's one of those bands, I didn't like them at first, but they, they've got some pretty catchy tunes and all. And uh, some substance abuse issues in the band that have kind of thwarted their uh, overall success, relatively speaking. But uh, I heard him speaking today and uh, good Lord, man. Uh, he's from Mississippi, some city I can't pronounce. Okanuba or something like that. Uh, Okeechobee. I don't know. But uh, that dude is country as hell. Good God. I'm from the South. I don't feel like I have a Southern accent. I mean, yeah, compared to somebody from like the Bronx. Yeah, I do. But I don't, I don't feel like I talk. I don't feel like I'm that country, right? Which is fine. If you talk like a hayseed, that's cool. I got no problem with it. I have no idea what a hayseed is. I guess it's the seed that comes off of hay. But uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not making fun of you. I'm just saying there's people that talk like that. I got good buddies that talk like that, but I can understand them. They make sense. I was in Alabama one time and uh, a lady came out to talk and explain some things to the group. And, uh, I had to look at some native Alabamian, Alabaman 
And I was like, what the hell did she just say? Because I, I mean, it was like Justin, we ought to God guarantee. I mean, it was like listening. That is a completely different type of Southern they speak down there. Um, and if I don't have a chance being in the middle of the country where I'm at, ain't no way somebody from Jersey would ever be able to communicate from anybody from Mississippi. So Brad Arnold, great singer and all, but that dude country as hell. Country as hell. And I had a debate <clears throat> early, early this morning. This is kind of weird friends I have. We were debating whether dysentery or cancer would be a worse death or which would they would choose if they could. And I was on team dysentery because, you know, I mean, you just drink some water and just suck it up. You know, you just eventually just, I don't know what really happens, but uh, it's it's got to be horrible. Uh, but it can't be cancer. And, she, you know, she's picking cancer. I, <laughs> so what are your thoughts? Dysentery or cancer? That's the, uh, what is today? Thursday. That's the Thursday question of the day. Hey,